Corny sits kind of in between, so they're between Terrell and Mesquite, so they should have a more compact area. But through this process, what we were able to determine is, is Corny had more residents coming from East Texas than they had a long tail because they had a movie theater and um, a few extra restaurants, but basically the same peer retail. But what we were seeing is a lot of people from East Texas were bypassing Terrell uh, for whatever reasons. Um, and, and they preferred to shop in, in Forney, which was a newer, um, you know, kind of um, higher quality retail than a little bit more tired, you know, older Walmart and, and Terrell. So there's a lot of nuances that you can pick up kind of watching the customer patterns and trends. And then uh, downtown Arlington, uh, again, another we talked about a little bit about the ingredients, but being able to pull from the visitor economy and the immediate downtown core and uh, being in the proximity of, of Arlington and having kind of this homogeneous mass around you. Um, if you look at some of the tenant bases, some of these tenants are very similar to what you see in Ono. Bags, um, Fuzzy Taco, Twisted, uh, Twisted Root. Root. And then um, you're starting to see some operators, some kind of unique operators from Bishop Arts District, um, you know, B Enchilada, um, and some other concepts. But um, again, it's, it's capitalizing on the ingredients that are already available and merchandising in a way to create a place that's unique or special. Yeah, and they've done a good job in Arlington, helping out. But a different strategy would be, uh, you oh, guys, um, you know, they invested a lot in, in, a, in a champion study. They haven't invested a significant amount in their infrastructure. And so we're working with them on kind of CIP and planning because the, the infrastructure downtown is, is, is pretty dysfunctional. Um, they're going to hit, they're going to hit a wall where they can't develop anymore. They're going to hit some constraints where they can't develop anymore because the parking capacity is not there, the utility, utility capacity is not there, and so they're thinking through that, but they necessarily haven't invested the infrastructure yet. What about any incentives for the restaurants? And they haven't. Um, most of the restaurants, yeah, most of the restaurants uh, have been, um, in essence, um, delivered from the private sector without a lot of public participation, and, and, and that's. That's usually the goal. I mean, if the ingredients are there, you can find an operator that can capitalize on uh, on the market share. Then, then you, you, you shouldn't have to bridge the gap. So. And then uh, four corners, just briefly, um, that was an area that's been kind of looked and studied at for quite a while. Um, we came in with kind of a two-tiered approach: a mixed-use new urbanism with residential and office. Um, and that, that's the interesting uh, project program that you guys were talking about, kind of the inhabitable structure where they weren't able to recycle the improvements. So they scraped it, um, invested significantly. We had two strategies. You can either do a mixed use, um, much more complicated, and you have to line all of these ingredients at the same time, or we had a grocery operator um, that was interested in the location, one operator versus kind of multiple operators. Um, they ended up pulling the trigger with the grocery operator. We got a couple of restaurants in play for, for the pad site. So again, a little less traditional, more kind of the national operator, just different strategy. And then I'm going to bring up a project that we were involved in um, with, with, with Billingsley, just because I think it's good uh, for context. This is the One Arts Plaza in downtown at the Arts District. Um, and this is the merchandising down on the first floor. But if you if you look at, um, and you probably wouldn't notice us driving or eating there, but if you um, are shopping there, but Screen Door was a concept from Bishop Arts District um, that uh, Scott Jones had. and. This is actually his response to Hattie's. It's in the Bishop Arts District. And so Scott Jones opened Screen Door kind of as a response to Hattie's, but very organic, proven operator. Um, Fedor was um, actually uh, uh, Gina Campisi and the Campisi family. Um, this was her opportunity. This is her breakout opportunity to not work for the family anymore and create her own venture. And so, again, another organic concept with a proven operator. Um, you may recognize Jorge from UT. Uh, or even the Midland area, but certainly a staple there. And then uh, the commissary previously, that was Dolly Weinbar. Dolly Weinbar was, the, in essence, the general manager at Donna Grill um, that had a tremendous amount of client, clientele. Um, that was the only operator that wasn't successful. That was, the, the, the concept was successful. Um, he just didn't have the, the, the staying power to open up kind of pre-arts district. Everybody kind of opened up green. But in this area, it was a lot of private subsidies. Most of, this, most of these operators, we invested in buying units into the business where we actually owned an uh, interest in the units. Um, and obviously, um, we participated very heavily on the tenant finish out in order to get these operators in. So this is more private investment that, that allowed these operators to work. But most of these operators couldn't afford with their own balance sheet, even pre-recession, to, uh, to open up in these formats. But 
if you look, these are very similar tenants, or at least kind of contextually similar tenants that you would find in Arlington or, or Roanoke, just different uh, ingredients. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, does your process identify the gaps well enough for a city to determine what they might need to do to bridge the gap, if any? Yes, from a financial standpoint, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and ideally, you find the operators that don't need to bridge the gap. Um, but it, yes, there are times from an investment strategy that you might. Well, you've got that identifying who you are. Right. And, and yeah. if, if you want to stick with who you are, then there's probably less gap in the than Correct. Right. But if you want to shift that, that would take more energy and more resources. It, and it depends on the ingredients. Again, if you can, if the ingredients are there, maybe articulating the availability of the ingredients to the right operator and pursuing the right strategy. Um, but if your vision is different, it doesn't necessarily align with the fundamental ingredients, or you, or you know that the ingredients are shifting, but they're not part of the area. This would be a great example. The arts district was 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 in play, but the theaters weren't rolling when a lot of these operators opened, and so we had to we had to personally bridge the gap on a lot of these operators to get them to the point where uh, all this could mature. Out of sheer curiosity, that no was that furniture, or what? no furniture, yes, it is furniture. yes. Um, and that's fun. It was originally going to be um, an iClub. We had a fish tank in there that was um, uh, put in and built prior to the building being constructed, kind of when the slab was poured, and we had to come in and pull the mullions out of the windows and, and cut the fish tank out. And it, it, now it's a, probably a better use, but it was going to be a, uh, a pretty intense uh, nightclub. So I think from a merchandising standpoint, this is probably a lot, a lot cleaner use. So. And I know uh, T. Sakura appreciates that. Have they performed well there? Yeah, the, the operators, and we track sales on all these. I, I don't anymore, but most of these operators started out at $450 to $500 a foot, which is which is on the upper echelon of what most operators are performing. Most of these now are above the $880 mark, which is kind of the top performers in, in, in Dallas for work. So um, with the exception, I did mention Dolly. Um, he, his numbers, his square foot numbers were up, but it just didn't have the staying power to, to make it through. So. And then, um, again, a lot of these, these little areas that we talked about, the I-35 corridor, um, downtown area, Vista Ridge Mall, and 121, it's just understanding the ingredients and the different nuances um, in order to, you know, again, be proactive in, in this process. Okay, okay let's, take a, let's take a quick break. That's in your presentation right now. We it is. We have questions and stuff. Y'all going to be here? Sure. Let's take a quick five-minute break right now since they finished the presentation. Okay.